Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. We've got a great show for you tonight, but before we start, I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Balance of Nature. You know I take my health very seriously. One of the ways I do that is taking Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies in a capsule. They have an amazing story of how this product was developed by Dr. Douglas Howard. You can read all about it yourself on their website. Balance of Nature receives over a thousand success stories every single month. They have hundreds of thousands of customers who have purchased billions of capsules of their fruits and veggies over the past 20 years. Their products are gluten-free and non-GMO, and they contain no added sugars or synthetics. If you're looking for something to make you feel better naturally, you should definitely give Balance of Nature a try. In fact, you can order online today. And whether you order online or call them direct, you can use the promo code LARA to get this special offer of 35% off plus $10 off any additional sets, plus free shipping and their money back guarantee. Call them at 800-246-8751 and use discount code LARA or order online at balanceofnature.com and use discount code LARA to get 35% off. I don't even know what to say to start tonight because this one is so epic. Tonight we are joined by Chicago Bears legend and Hall of Famer number 54. You know him. You love him. Brian Erlacher. Brian, uh, welcome to The Right View. I, I'm, I'm so stoked to have you on. Slight fangirl situation because uh -oh. I am a huge football fan. And my dad was a linebacker. He played for Purdue uh, back whenever they won the national championship. This is way back in the day. But nonetheless... I love watching football, and I always loved watching you play football, and hence you shared the same position as my dad. So very cool to get you on. But before we talk football, and I do want to talk about that, um, obviously people know you as a Chicago Bear, and obviously they know you from football. But before that, I read that you were trying to be Brian Erlacher, the landscaper. <laughs> How, what happened? Were, is this a teenage business? Would this have happened had football not worked out? What was going on? So I, I grew up in the – first of all, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Big fan of yours as well and your family, obviously. Anyway. Thank um, you. I grew up in New Mexico, and my, both of my parents worked. They busted their butts to, to provide for our family. But in the summers when there wasn't anything going on, I mowed yards. You know, I – Push my lawnmower around town, carry the weed eater, just trying to make money because I wanted to go to the fair at the end of the summer. So that's what I was doing to try and make money. So at the end of the summer, I could go to the, the Lee County Fair and have some fun for those two weeks. But I always end up blowing all my money in the first night and then have to mow a couple <laughs> yards during the week to go back if I wanted to go back. But yeah, I just, it was easy, not easy money, but it was the best way I could make money, you know, and not have to depend on my parents to get, to get uh, money in my pocket. I, by the way, I'm I'm all about hard work. My brother had a um, what's a power washing company Ooh. that he he sort of started in high school. I mean, I use the word company very loosely. I'm sure there's no yeah. LLC or anything official, but it's great. I and I love that drive. And obviously, it carried you far. You were a very talented football player, but you had to put the work in to do that. I read you played other sports. What other sports were you into in high school? Oh, everything. Should I played football, basketball, baseball. I ran track and once uh, once I got to high school because it was better for football to run track. But I loved basketball. I thought I was pretty good. I yeah. wasn't as good as I thought I was. I was a little better <laughs> at football. That's why I kept playing. But, uh, yeah, we were always doing something. We went from sport to sport to sport. Not like now where they kind of, you know, they do one thing and they just get really good at it. We, uh, we did everything back then. Like most kids my age, it's just you did what you did. It was fun. Yeah, no, by the way, I'm roughly your age as well. And that's We're a little that's younger than my, me. Well, I'll take it, right? <laughs> a little Jesus, bit, yeah. Uh, give, me, give me anything I can get. Um, yeah. But I did the same thing. I, I played so many different sports and, and I loved doing it. And I'm actually doing that with my kids now. I mean, they're young, they're four and six, but I have them in everything because my idea is like, I just want to expose them to everything. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they maybe they hone in on something and they feel like, you know, that's the path they want to take. You have kids. How how is it for your kids? Did your kids follow in your athletic footsteps, or or what's happening? <clears throat> My kids are amazing. I'm I'm so lucky. So I have a 23 year old who's a, a law student at Marquette in Milwaukee. Wow. I have a 19 year old daughter who goes to the University of Kansas. She's a freshman, and I have my son who's just enrolled at Notre Dame for fo uh, not football for school, but he's on the football team. He went in January. He did the early enrollment in January, so he gets a head start on uh, on school and football. But yeah, so we're empty nesters. It's kind of different. 
around my wow. house right now, but it's uh, it's nice. It's quiet, but I'm 45 and I got no kids at home, so it's uh, it's a little different. Wow, yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> I'm 41 and my kids are going to be around for you a got long youngsters. time. So, yes. Yeah, you really beat me beat me to that one. Well, I always wonder what's better on that front because. Either you you kind of do it all early and then you have like your, you know, the rest yeah. of your life to enjoy. Or do you kind of live some of your life in your 20s and 30s? And do you ever think about that? Like how different it may have been? I, I don't know any difference. So it's hard. My brother had two. So he has a, a four and a one year old and he's 44. So he started late. But I don't know. I mean, I kind of like it because I'm, I'm a young dad. I'm enjoying kind of being part of that. You know, I can go visit them now. They're some they're old enough to go out and do things so we can go out some fun together we went to the bahamas last year as a family it was a blast because they're 18 that can gamble and drink which oh, not geez. a great not a great thing but it was fun we had a good time we could all do what we wanted to do it's just nice to be a, a, to see them as young adults kind of kind of maturing and doing their own thing yeah and so you said your son plays football what what's his position what's he what's he doing he plays free safety at Notre dame um great school i'm just so happy Football is great. I love football, but that degree he's going to get when he leaves there is going to be a lot bigger yeah. than anything he can do on the football field. So I'm excited for him, excited about the possibilities he got in front of him. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Well, now I don't know if we could like be this tight anymore because Notre Dame and Purdue, and Purdue are, are rivals. Right. It's a big deal. So I don't know. Well, maybe we got to rethink well, this I'm not going bit, there. Right? He's going there. You know, I'm, I'm rooting for him, but <laughs> I'm going for Purdue this weekend in the tournament. Okay, we'll take that. Yes. We'll take that. They're awesome. That, that's enough. Uh, that, that'll be good for me. To get back to you and your your career in football, which obviously, do you ever get tired of talking about it, Brian? Is that because everybody love comes? No. See, okay, I love that. Yeah, no, Good. I mean, I, I'm just glad people still want to talk about it. You know, I'm 12 years <laughs> removed from the game, so I'm uh, I'm still excited to talk about it. But yeah, I love football. I'm a huge fan now. You know, uh, being as far removed as I am, I'm a huge fan. I love college football, love high school, love NFL. I just like watching. Yeah, no, I'm I'm the same way. I, I agree with you. I actually, to be honest with you, think I like watching college football more than I like watching professional football, only because there's so much like heart in it and there's so much rivalry with the schools. I love that. I love that aspect of it. Now, obviously, it's a different, it's a totally different league when you get to the NFL. Yeah. Um, but uh, w let me ask you this. I read actually yesterday about this new uh, kickoff return rule yeah. that the NFL has implemented. I, I, apparently it's it's for keeping people safer that's really when you see the most injuries are on these kickoff returns what do you think of that i know they're kind of trying it this season i'm all about player safety i think it's great that they're trying to make the game safer i just kickoffs are kickoffs you know i think they, they did some things with the wedge a few years ago to take guys out from getting hit full speed collisions they're still going to get hurt you know it's football it's yeah. full speed they're all big fast strong guys um it's going to look weird. I know that much. Seeing the way that what I've seen from it so far, it's going to look weird because we're not used to seeing the NFL do that. Yeah. So, um, and they also changed one of the tackling rules, the hip tackle. I don't even know what it looks like. I don't know. I've never heard that tackle before. But um, I, I'm all about player safety. It's kind of getting a little overblown these days. But I get it. You got to protect the guys. You got to protect your investments. Yeah. What was the worst injury you ever had playing? Probably my wrist. I dislocated my wrist in 2009, first quarter of the first game of the year at Green Bay. I missed the rest of the season. So frustrating. Oh, Bust your well, butt all, all off season to get ready for the season in the first quarter. I played the first half, so I didn't know how bad it was. And then our trainer said, "You got You can't. We're doing surgery at night, so you got to get out of the game." Terrible. Oh yeah. Wow. So I dislocated my elbow one time. This Ooh. was when I was a kid. I was yeah. riding horses and just horses have been actually very bad for me, but I love them. Dislocated my elbow. It's a big animal. It's a thousand pound animal. You mm -hmm. gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. But yep. I also broke both of my wrists three weeks before my husband and I got married riding horses as Falling well. Off and, yeah. And that was, yeah. uh, that was not a pretty one. So I can commiserate Oof. with anyone, but Look, I guess a, a dislocated wrist, you you could have worse things I dislocated both of football. my wrists. I dislocated this one in high school and this one in the NFL. <laughs> so oh, my gosh. We're, we're on the same page when it comes to the wrist injuries. I know. And the older you get, man, the, the injuries uh, <laughs> start to catch I up. I don't put myself you. in jeopardy anymore. I just ride my bike, ride the Peloton, do my little bit of lifting, and play golf. And oh, you're on do. the Peloton. Will you share your name on the Peloton? Do people I'll know it? I'll just say uh, it's Trump 2024 is my hashtag. How about that? <laughs> I don't. I don't uh, share my name because I don't want to deal with. I, I just want to ride my bike. I just want to ride. I no I one knows my, my name either, Brian. Good. I'm Peloton. keeping mine. No one it's knows not, it. 
It's not my name. It's a different name, but I, uh, it's tr hashtag Trump 2024. That's my, uh, Oh, I love that. Yes. I love, well, let me, let me real quick before we get back to football, let me ask you about that. There have been some photos of you playing golf with president mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Yeah. You've obviously been, you're very open about discussing the fact that you are a Trump supporter. Have you gotten any backlash for that? Has anybody been brave enough to confront Brian Urlacher over that? Mostly online. You know how it is. All the tough guys are online t texting you stuff. It's okay. I, I mean, I'm very pro-America, just like Donald Trump and your family. I, I believe in everything he's done. When he was in office, our country was great. You see what's happening now. It's very frustrating. But I, I've yeah. never been to, I was never into to politics until the last five, six years. I didn't, I didn't care. Who did? You know, right. and they tried to divide us, and you know you got to pick a side. So I pick. I feel like I'm on the right side. You know, I uh, I love America. I love what he stands for. It's funny. I was, I was wearing this hat. I wear this hat almost every day. And this guy he goes, I love what your hat stands for. He goes, I'll give you ten bucks for the hat. He goes, the name on it's great because I love what it stands for. So and people see wow. Trump and they think great things. So I uh, I'm very proud to uh, to support him. That's amazing. Well, thank you. And thank you for, for being outspoken about it because for sure. I think there, there are so many people out there and I'm sure people probably say to you, Oh, I wish I could come out and say something, but I'm, I'm nervous about it. But uh, Brian, like we're at a place in our country where, as you just noted, things are, things are bad. We have yeah. to change the trajectory of America. And there really is only one person who can do that. He is the Republican nominee for president. Mm -hmm. He's my father-in-law. Oh. And the, the great thing is we know what he's going to do because he's already he's been president for yes. four years. Con yeah. By the way, congrats on the RNC. That's amazing. I'm oh, very excited for you. That's great for thank the, you. the Republicans, by the way. Um, yeah, we, we know what he can do. He's done it, and he's the only guy that can come in and fix what, what the other guy has done the last four years. The only guy that can do it, in my opinion. Yeah. If anyone knows him, he knows what to do. He'll do it. He's not scared. Uh, he'll take on everybody. I mean, everyone respects him, you know, worldwide. You, these other leaders don't. Don't mess with him. Wars don't happen when he's in office. Good things That's, happen. Oh, amen. We get peace agreements in the Middle East when Donald Weird. Trump is in office. Weird how that happens. It's, they don't push yeah, us it's around. funny how that works. Uh, mm -hmm. World War Three is actually starting. It appears under Joe Biden. Um, yes. But it's funny you say you really weren't into politics until you know re Donald Trump came on the scene. I think a yep. lot of people can relate to that. He certainly kind of opened up this world to people that. I mean, sadly, people never really paid much attention to politics, and it really does have a huge impact in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, but what's been most interesting to me, I think, recently and in the past couple years, is how many more people are now kind of waking up. And anyone who previously maybe thought, oh, I don't know, maybe Donald Trump is no good, what, I'm going to believe what the mainstream media says, yeah. all the lies— What's your take just being out amongst, you know, your friends, people you hang out with? I feel like there's a different vibe right now. and People are starting to get it a little bit more. The people who were not so sure about him a few years ago that were kind of on the fence that I knew are off the fence and on Donald Trump's side now. They're voting for wow. him. But you said the friends thing. So my, my friend circles have really tightened up over the last few years because of the political situation. A lot, you're really? Either, yeah, it's crazy. It was good for me because, you know, the guys who are on the fence. <laughs> Weeds them out. Uh, you're exactly <laughs> right. So my, my circles are much tighter and I, I enjoy that. And I want to hang out with those people because I want to be with people who are as like minded as me. I'm OK with the other side. We just don't we don't talk about it. You know, you, you get you, it's, it's not easy to talk about. So we just kind of avoid those conversations. But uh, it, my friend circles have gotten so tight. It's great. But the guys who were on the fence are off the fence now and they're they're on Trump's side because they see what's happened the last two and a half, three years with um, the other guy in there. Wow. I, I I love to hear that. And I feel like it's it's kind of palpable right now. Like people can yes. really sense what's at stake and they're, they're kind of pissed off quite frankly, that they got like taken by the media. They're like, wait a minute. I bought into the lies about this guy. And now look where we are. Look at the guy in the white house right now. I feel like they're upset about it, but look, we're going to leave nothing to chance. As Oof. you said, I'm, I'm at the RNC now. I'm the co-chair. I'm yes. proud of, of, of taking that job, but we are going to work our hardest over the next Gosh, 200 plus days in order to make sure that there is nothing left to chance. And on November 5th, he will be reelected as re president of the United States. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Nobody move. We're going to ask Brian some more questions on the other side. All right. I hate to interrupt the show, but I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Swiss America. Our country is facing so many problems these days under Joe Biden. The last thing any of us need is more to worry about. 
Unfortunately, now we have to fear losing our freedom and privacy with the Democrats' new push for a digital dollar that could allow the government to tell us what we can and cannot buy with our own hard-earned money. That's why I'm encouraging every one of you tuning into the show right now to get The Secret War on Cash, an insightful report created by my friends at Swiss America. With this report, you'll learn how to protect yourself from the threats facing our freedom and your hard-earned money. The report is available right now to my listeners free of charge. Just call 800-289-2646 or visit www.swissamerica.com slash Trump for your free report. Mike Lindell has a passion to help you get the best sleep of your life. After he invented the world's best pillow, he created the famous Giza Dream Sheets. They're the best sheets you will ever sleep on. For a limited time, you can get a queen size set for $59.98, king size set just $69.98. These are the lowest prices in history. Mike and my pillow continue to be canceled by big box stores and attacked by the media. And they appreciate all of your support during these times and want to say thank you by giving you free shipping on your entire order today. To get these specials, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-624-3945 and use promo code TRUMP. You get the famous Giza Dream Sheets, queen size $59.98, king size $69.98, You'll also get 60% off the original My Slippers. So call 800 624 3945 or go to mypillow.com, promo code TRUMP for free shipping today. Um, all right, Brian, we're going to get really quickly back to some football stuff. Great. So, yeah, I because you know we, we love to talk about it. I really do love to talk about it. Um, you actually initially did not get offered a scholarship to the school you wanted to attend no. when you were going to go to college, right? Yep. How how did that impact your life? And do you ever have, like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Because I feel like sometimes going through stuff like that are really, those are the moments that really shape you. It was great. It worked out as best as it possibly could. You know, I wanted to go to Texas Tech. I went to their camp. The summer before my senior year, I was the most outstanding camper out of 500 kids. So I'm like, they're going to offer me a scholarship for sure. And I was six, 300, I was skinny, 190 pounds. But they didn't offer me a scholarship. They said I could walk on. We couldn't afford to pay for my school. So I couldn't walk on. The University of New Mexico offered me a scholarship. So, of course, I accepted. Went to school there for four years. And like the, the, the opportunity gave me to be a football player, not just a, a, a safety or a linebacker, but a football player. I played offense, defense, special teams. Gave me a chance to kind of show what I could do and for the, for those scouts at the next level, see what kind of athlete I was. So I think it worked out great. It was perfect play for some great coaches at New Mexico. And uh, I don't think I have a chip on my shoulder or anything, but it was, you know, it's kind of like, that's what you get Texas tech for not giving me a scholarship. <laughs> well, and that's amazing. You're just saying like you, you in high school, you played a lot of different positions. Yeah. Did you not play linebacker at all in high school? No, we had good linebackers. I was a free safety and a re- wide receiver in high school. I, I wow. did not. Uh, yeah, I was never. And even in college, I played my last two years. I played free safety. So it was a, it was a kind of a hybrid guy, you know, but I never got blocked. It was great. Just ran to the football and hit people. So that was fun. And I play, <laughs> I still played a little receiver in college too, but yeah, we were, um, we were state champs my senior year. We we're pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we'll, you'll take that. Absolutely. Like, That's yeah. like nothing nothing to shy away from there. I love it. Well, listen, uh, I think you're, you, you're obviously you did so much in this sport. Your hometown, actually, I read, made an, a Brian Erlacher day. Is that right? Yeah, so there's a street. It's pretty cool. There's a street, <laughs> Brian Erlacher Boulevard or street. They named the uh, workout facility after me, the Brian Erlacher. Uh, my name's on. It's cool, man. Lovington, there's not a whole lot going on there. We have oil. And we have dirt and tumbleweeds, and that's about it. And our, our people, they work hard down there. Uh, it's, it's tough living, so we, we, uh, we bust our butts down there. Um, but, yeah, it's a great great place to be from. There's really not much to do, so there's a lot of pretty good athletes and, <laughs> and people play sports all the time. Yeah, you got to get you gotta just play sports, get good at something. I'm yep. sure – I grew up in uh, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. I'm sure they're counting down the days, Brian, until they can have a, a Laura Trump <laughs> Boulevard. 100%. Or an, yeah, like read, I actually went to the same high school that Michael Jordan went to. I went to Laney what? High School. Not the same time. Let's just – Oh, yeah, no, I, I, obviously Michael's a little yeah. older, yeah. Barely. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But we, but the um, the athletic director Fred Lynch was still our athletic director there, and he was a men's basketball coach who cut Michael Jordan from the first time mm. when he tried out for for basketball. Varsity. He was still there when I was there. Um, great guy, loved loved Coach Lynch. 
But uh, it says the the Michael J. Jordan gymnasium on our our gym there at Laney. And I'm sure at some point they'll just tack right onto the side of it. And Laura Trump, and Laura they're going to. I'm just kidding. They're 100%. never going to do this, Brian. RNC because... chair, Laura Trump. <laughs> but that, isn't that kind of sad? Like politics has has become like such a. Uh, it's something that that really divides people, and they're they're like, ah, oh, I'm sure I'm like, you know, poison to some of these people, but I will still always be proud of where I grew up. I'm sure as you are proud. Same here. Yes. You, yeah. For sure. Um, but I won't be holding my breath for that. I do want to <laughs> ask you about your brief stint as a professional wrestler while playing for the Bears. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't really a professional. I I had a buddy who was I don't I can't remember the name. It wasn't WWE. It was the one below that before they get into oh. WWE. He wanted me to come to a show, so I went to a show to watch. He goes, "Do you want to be in the skit?" I was like, "Not really, but I will." So I get up on there and I, I want to do. I think I like clothesline two guys and I picked up Johnny Fairplay. He's 140 pounds and threw him <laughs> out of the uh, the ring and into the guys I had just clotheslined. And then I got back, and the Bears were not happy. They were pissed off. I had to do a physical. I had to sign a paper that I wouldn't do this. They took oh, the basketball wow. goals out of our training facility because of me. So, yeah, it was uh, not a good idea. It was it was fun. It was cool, but it was not smart by me to do that, I guess. But I didn't get hurt, you though. You know what? What's, yeah, well, good, good you didn't get hurt. What's yeah. always been fascinating to me about, like, professional wrestling, and I'm sure you can appreciate this as a professional athlete yourself, is there, there's a lot that goes into wrestling. Like when I was a kid and I used to see it, I'd be like, this is all fake. Like this is all stunts and whatnot. It's real. Like it is very physical to be a professional wrestler. Did you gain any yeah. respect for, for people who do that while you had your, your very short step? I already have respect for him, but you just see how hard those falls are they take and the yeah. timing they have to have. I mean, they're, they're athletic as hell. Number one, doing the things they do in that ring. Uh, I could never do a flip off a rope or even try. I can't even do a flip in the pool. But, yeah, <laughs> the, the things they do are, are unbelievable and they're athletic as hell. Uh, but I, I have a ton of respect for those guys and, and the way they do it and that level they do it at. And the, U, the UFC guys, yeah. by the way, the wrestling is one thing. The UFC guys are unbelievable. Oh, forget it. Oh, those man. guys are that's, amazing. That's different. Yeah, they're they're different breeds. I'm sure you've been to some fights. Have you been? I love watching. Yeah, I love watching. I love going. That's the most exciting sporting event I've ever been to is a UFC fight. It's amazing. See, it doesn't matter for you because you live out west, but for those of us on the east coast, I just have a hard time staying awake for that. I mean, this is oh, like an yeah. old lady complaint. The the I go like, to bed at nine action... p.m. or so. Okay, yeah. so see, I, I'm like Eric, and I will order these things, and it's so late by the time like you're getting to the second to last. You know, you're waiting for the the yeah. main card event. I'm like, I'm falling asleep. I can't stay awake for it. I'm just gonna put it out there in the universe. Uh, to, you know, whoever Start wants earlier. to pick this up, <laughs> maybe we could just a couple hours earlier. I don't know, unless you're like in Vegas and you're like, you're making a night of it and the whole thing. It's a little late for I me. Get but, it, um, I get it for yeah. sure. Monday Night Football, same way, man. I'm watching it like 10 it, I'm like, oh yeah. no, I'm struggling to stay awake for sure. See, and now, and you used to play in those games, Brian. Wow. I know. Like yeah, what's how times have changed. Now, what are you doing for work, working out these days? What, what's that look like so for you? I ride the Peloton, Other than the Peloton every day. The Peloton six days a week if I can. And I do wow. maybe 15 minutes of lifting. I just do a bunch of reps. No, no heavy weight anymore. Just trying to, my number one goal is to not get fat. That's it. <laughs> I just want to not get fat. That is my number one goal. I've, so far, I haven't gained any weight since I retired. I think I've is lost that like very five, good five, for you? Lost like five or six pounds. I'm like 250. So I'm good. Yeah, I'm just trying not to get fat. That's it. Well, but well, by the way, I give you a lot of credit for not going down like the Ozempic path because that, that's Ooh. how a lot of people fall these days. I know. What, do you, what is your thought on that? Because for me, as someone who's, I mean, you know, I was never a professional athlete. I'm still waiting for that shot. I'm sure one day. You're a machine, though. Like, you train. You train. They'll yeah. be like, I do. Thank you for noticing. Yeah, you train for but, sure. I'm like, you know, you got to kind of, you got to put in the effort for whatever it is in life. Like whether we're talking about winning a presidential election, whether we're talking about, you know, being a hall of fame football player or whether we're talking about just staying in shape. I don't know. For me, you got to put in the effort and I'm just afraid all these people taking, doing the Ozempic thing. I don't know to lose like five pounds. Mm. Well, I have some friends who have taken it and they've lost more than five. They, they, it's, it's doing something. At least you're trying to take your health into your own hands, right? You're doing something to That's get better. That's true. So I'm an active person. I cannot just sit around and do nothing. I, I got to do stuff. I like being yeah. outside. I like working out. I'm playing golf. I'm fishing. I'm doing something. Um, 
but whatever, you, I mean, you got to do something, you know, right? If, if you can't lose the weight doing that, you don't have time to exercise, uh, maybe you can do, do that, that route. I mean, I got no problem with it. People are trying to get better, so, so why not try that? Well, I do. I do agree for people who need to lose like a massive amount of weight. I think this is much better than being like very overweight because that is a, yes. a problem for your health. But I know a couple of friends who are just like, oh, I want to lose like an extra five pounds. And I'm like, OK, you, yeah, that's not uh, that's maybe not cut out for. a glass or two of wine. I don't know. Or, but, maybe let's say off some sugar. I, I'm a sugar guy. Oh, I have a hard time not doing oh, sugar. What's mm. your what's your go to chocolate? Dr. Pepper, sweet tea. Oh. Uh, I mean, I just, I'm a junk food. Donuts. I love donuts. Uh, so oh, I just wow. got to work out. I just got to work out more. It's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> I can do so that. So you're, you're like I am though. So if I'm going for sweet stuff, it's always chocolate. I don't want yes. anything to do with like gummies or fruity type stuff. But my no. kids are, are kind of into that stuff. And it actually works out because they bring all this stuff home. I mean, heck, you know, we're in the season of like Easter egg hunts and all yes. that right now. Believe me, I'm not having anything to do with, uh, you know, the little jelly stuff. Or anything. I don't want any of that. I'm, I'm all in my for wife the chocolate. Lo- my wife loves that stuff, and I like chocolate. So we're kind of opposite there. So it works like um, I don't eat her stuff. She doesn't eat mine. We're good. Well, there you go. It all works <laughs> out. Um, yes. Before we let you go today, I just have to ask expert opinion. What do you think about the upcoming season? Who do you like? Who's looking good to you? Yeah. I mean, the, the, match, the rematch between Kansas City and the 49ers. I think uh, a lot of people, some people loved, some people hated. What do you think for next season? I'm a, I'm a Chiefs fan. I like, so I played for Andy Reid in a couple of Pro Bowls early in my career in Hawaii when it used to be over there. I'm a huge fan of his. Mahomes is unbelievable. You know, the, the, the things he does in the football field, no one's ever done before. Um, San Fran's good. They're going to be probably the same yeah. team they had last year coming back. So I don't, I don't see why there shouldn't be a rematch. Someone's going to sneak in there. There's always a team or two. Josh Allen up at Buffalo is good. You know, that dude's a, a beast. Uh, Philly's going to be back. You know, I had down year last year. But it's hard for me to pick against the Chiefs. So defending Two-time defending champs. You got yeah. Mahomes at quarterback. Andy Reid's coming back. Uh, they signed Chris Jones back to D. Lyman. So I think uh, they're still a team to beat until someone knocks them off. Okay. Oh, well, I'm, you just I, made... way, I grew up a Cowboys fan, so they're going to sneak in there oh. somehow. The Cowboys are going to sneak in there and make some people mad, but they'll probably lose in the playoffs. But <laughs> that's my team. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. So playing your entire career for, you know, Chicago, mm-hmm. did you ever have it in like, were you ever like, mm, I hope that maybe Dallas, were you ever interested in that? Would that have ever happened for you? It was never an option, honestly, but the Bears always redid my contract early. And then when I, when I did retire, I was, I was done. So it didn't, it was never an option. So it worked out good. But I, wow. you know, once, the minute I retired, I was back to being a Cowboys fan. Not when I played. Wow. But when I retired, I was like, all right, now I can be a Cowboys fan again. I'm, I like the Bears too. Don't get me wrong, but I'm, I'm. <laughs> I'm diehard Cowboys fan. I love it. Well, listen, yep. that's that's loyalty. When if you can you can play your entire career for a team and then go back to you know the OGs. I like that. That's yeah, that's my good squad. with me. Um, well, we have obviously we talked about the upcoming football season. We'll we'll see what happens there. Yeah. What is your prediction for this coming November? As as obviously an open Trump supporter. Yep. What do you think his chances are coming up? I know what I think, but let me hear from you. He has to win. If he doesn't win, we're in big trouble. Um, I think it's going to be a landslide. If that there's nothing, no shenanigans going on, and nothing, mm. you know, if it's fair and nothing's going on behind the scenes, <clears throat> I think it's a landslide. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. I think it's a landslide. I mean, um, America sees what's going on. We know what's best for our country. Hopefully, most of us do. But just can't trust him. You know, I, I believe he'll get more votes and more. You know, people are going to vote for him, but we'll just see uh, how it turns out. How about that? Yeah. So you uh, you are probably of the opinion, like I'm going to say half the country, that 81 million yeah. people were likely not so inspired by a guy who campaigned out of his basement. Where are they at now? Where are those 81 million people now? Where no are they, talk, Brian? No one talks about this guy. I mean, I Where mean, they? Oh, I, I, I won't bore you, but man, it's, it's amazing. that No one talks about this guy. Or they're in the well, they're in their basements now because they're embarrassed to vote for him if they actually voted for him. They should be. They ought to be. Uh, Otherwise, yeah, they should like, be. Stay I, there. yeah, come on out. Come on out and tell us how proud you are of the job that Joe Biden. And you know what's interesting to me is everywhere you go, there's like Trump swag, right? We've got the MAGA yes. hats. We've got our hats always, every, yes. Yeah. You don't see Biden stuff stickers. Every, you don't see Biden hats. Biden? You see nothing. Nothing. Oh, nothing. Nothing. There's nothing. They don't make them. But no one's going to buy them. Well, that's right. Well, they may buy them and do really uh, horrible things to them. And we would never encourage anything like that. <laughs> no, or never. No. But um, but yeah, look, it's it, it's obviously imperative that Donald Trump 
wins. We we are very focused on making sure that there are no, as you put it, shenanigans that yes. are happening. Um, because look, we we know that we can't leave anything to chance. So uh, let's let's go. I love that you're on our team. Yes. That you're that we're part of the same crew. That's amazing. And I just want to say thank you, Brian. Thanks for taking time to join us today here for at sure. the right view. For anybody that wants to keep up with what you're doing, how can they follow you? How can they find you? I have an Instagram, but I don't really know. I'm not a big uh, social media <laughs> guy. I have I follow. Um, you should see my feed. Anyway, I follow your family, but I don't know my. It's uh, Brian Erlacher, 54 something. I think I'm not sure, but I'm not good. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> you, you can find me. I'm sure if you want to see me. You can Instagram. just look him up. <laughs> yeah, you can you're look around. Me up. I'm not hard to find. And you're not going to find right. me on Peloton either. So now see, now see, here's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to be on the on the lookout. Wait, we could be friends, you. and you you would know. That's okay, the only way you would know. Okay, let me ask you this: yeah. Who is okay. your favorite Peloton instructor? Oh, so my old one, like quit. Jennifer Jacobs was my old one. She was like okay. three, four years ago, and then it was uh, Kendall Tool. And then it's, <laughs> now it's right now. I did take a lot of Ali Love classes, and I don't follow yeah. them on Instagram. I just the, how they teach their classes is why they don't. You know, um, my wife loves Alex Toussaint. He's a beast. Okay, so you're proving my 100% my point. So my husband is not like a huge Peloton guy, but when he goes on there, those are the exact people, Brian. He goes, he's, he's taking those classes. And I'm like, why are you <laughs> taking those classes? Let me guess. My know. favorites, I, I like Tunde and I like Alex. If you look at mine, that's all I'm taking. So maybe we're never going to even end up in the same class together, Brian. I no. don't even know. I love I watching my class, me rise up the leaderboard on the, like the live classes. It's amazing. That's <laughs> it just, it's competitive for me. I love it. Give it a competition in there. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, same. And I, I've done, uh, when I lived in New York, I did a lot of those like in-person yes. classes. And let me tell you, when they put the scores up on the board, forget it. I'm going to kill myself to be at the top of that screen. You better. Love I actually, it. when I was pregnant, I had to take myself off. Cause I was like, Ooh. I need to really like you tone to it back careful. a yeah. little bit. <laughs> so, but I hear you. All right. Well, I'm going to do my best to find out your Peloton name and I'll, All I'll right. see what's going on there. We'll check out your scores, Brian. We'll see how they stand up and how they uh, weigh yeah. in with mine. I do okay. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, well Brian Erlacher, thank you for uh, for taking time for the right view today. We appreciate you. And to everybody at home, as always, thank you for joining us. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. We'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. And I won't back down. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great sell plan and feel good about doing it.